Okay, uh, we're ready to start the work session. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Madam Clerk, could I have a roll call? Councilmember Christine Adamczak? Here. Councilmember Linda Hammer? Here. Councilmember Michael Jasinski? Here. Here. Councilmember Gerald Kaminsky? Present. Councilmember Brian Nowak? Present. Councilmember Brian Polarski? Present. Supervisor Diane Benchkowski? Here. Okay. We have everyone here tonight. Um, first item of discussion is Apple Tree Business Park. Uh, property manager Tina Coppins, are you here? There you are, Tina. Hi, Hi, good evening. Guys. Thanks for being here. I know you oh, had, thanks for allowing we had me a to. conversation. I suggested you come talk to the board. Sure. So I don't know, did everybody get did everybody get a copy of this? I, don't. I sent it to Kim. No? No, she might can you She's gonna bring it up, okay. I think. Yep, it's fine. We could do it from the screen, it'll work. Mm-hmm. So everybody can see it. So what sure. I did what I did was I put together an analysis for You might have to stay by the microphone now. Yeah. I have a pretty loud voice, but I'll say. Okay. So what I did is I put an analysis together, and what I did was, so on my taxes in 2021, my garbage tax was $53,629. So then I took all of my tax credits from picking up the trash for 2021, and it was 13446 leaving you with about $40,000 that I paid I had no service for. So what I did was, if you scroll up just a little bit, Kim, um, I went to Casella Waste and I asked them to, if I privatized it, they would charge me about $600 a month, which would be about $7,200. So what I'm looking to do is try to become something fair here is, because um, I did do some research on some other properties that have no, ta no garbage, no exemption. No, ta no garbage no tax? No garbage tax. No. Nope. Chictawaga? Yeah. Mm hmm. I could, I could. Yeah, I'll that'd be interesting. Okay. Mm hmm. So, obviously, I'm not going to get that cut off, I'm guessing. But what I'd like to do is have a discussion or sit down with somebody and figure out a fair way to make this either I pay month, get it off, and I pay monthly for whatever I use. Mm -hmm. or I just can privatize and I lose it all together, which obviously I want to support the people in the room. So I don't know if there's a way we can look at this. So you're on behalf of Apple Tree Business. Yes, I am. Okay. And my tenants. So mm -hmm. if you look down at the bottom, so right now my trash is costing myself and my tenants because we pass through taxes. Uh, right now, like, for town pickup is 13 cents. If I was to outsource it, it'd be two cents a square foot. So that could be substantial on a smaller business in the apple tree. So my goal here is to figure out what we can work together to try to reduce that garbage line and maybe, um, like I said, get rid of it and then just pay, get my invoice and I'll pay it monthly what I am actually using them to pick up my trash. You know, there's really, the only pros is, I mean, there's really no pros except it gets picked up. Um, but I have to buy my own dumpsters, I gotta maintain my own dumpsters, um, you know, and if I outsourced it, I wouldn't have to do any of that. I, mm -hmm. they would, I would get brand new dumpsters, there'd be no holes in them, I wouldn't have to repair them. You know, we try to keep them with no holes in them so we don't keep the rat population down. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so, and I, you know, my, my taxes be reduced a lot. So that's what I'm here to figure out what we can do. And I don't know if this has to go to another meeting or. Well, we'd have to, what, discuss, we'd have to change the whole way um, that the garbage tax is figured mm -hmm. out because it's based on your assessed value. And it's not fair. I agree with you. So, I mean, even when you look at my out, out parcels that have no building on it, they still get, they get billed, ta they get billed trash. They don't generate any trash. Hmm. 
so to speak, to be picked up. Nothing goes into the dumpster. So I just, that's what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. I don't know what our next step is if we need to. Any council members um, want to talk? Here's uh, So what you're saying is um, you get credited back every time our town sanitation picks up your dumpster. Correct. And then you get credited something. Yeah, just I don't get a bill. So, yeah, I get a bill similar to this. You can have a copy of this. Mm -hmm. So that's what I get monthly. And it depends on how many dumpsters are picked up and how many times they come. They usually come twice a week. So sometimes they pick up two dumpsters, sometimes they pick up three. The average is two. So all I do is I get this credit. I don't have to pay. When I started at the apple tree in 2001, our taxes were about thir maybe around $38,000 plus I was being billed. So what I ended up doing was started to do recycling cardboard, got a, co a company in to come in and take my cardboard out. And I was able to reduce my trash so I wasn't also paying in my taxes and paying more because mm -hmm. I would get a monthly bill and I was like wait a minute this doesn't seem right so right so something that we have to look at to how to uh, recalculate that or redo something because a lot of the other commercial properties are in your same situation sure I understand and I I agree with you that you're not getting the full service. Mm -hmm. So I think that, uh, you know, we'll have the board take a look at it. I, I'd like to you know, take a look at it. Sure. So anybody? Sorry. Yeah, I agree, agree. It has to be because uh, I know my business is in the city of Buffalo. Mm -hmm. We do have garbage pickup that we do pay for, but I also have my own container service that I personally pay for. It's part of doing business in my book. Mm -hmm. But that just, uh, the part I don't understand if they're, you're paying the taxes on this and some others are not, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, isn't that, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, like I said, I, I'm not opposed to paying it, paying mm -hmm. taxes, but when you look at the difference, where's the, you know, 40,000, it doesn't sit mm -hmm. well. I agree, and everybody's hurting in businesses, I know. Right. You know, you're watching every penny now. Mm -hmm. And this has come to light. So. And we're now with and now what I'm worried about is with that this remote and everybody can work from home or the hybrid. When my renewals start coming up, I'm going to start. They're either going to downsize or they're not going to have space. So then I'm going to end up. You're going to end up with an empty building down mm -hmm. the road. I just foresee this is not going to work out. With this new, you know, everybody works from home. Woohoo! Mm -hmm. It's great. No, it's not great. Right. It's not great for nobody. Yeah. But, so not knowing the whole story behind it yet and not mm -hmm. digging into it, my concern is it, it could open up a can of worms on, hey, as a, as a business owner or a resident, mm -hmm. I don't use X, Y, Z services from the town, so how do I get that off my tax bill? I, I don't ever call the police, so how do I get that portion out of my tax bill? As a business, I'm not using youth and rec and seniors. How do I get that portion out of my tax bill? And not knowing the whole story, we'll have mm -hmm. to look into it, but it could open up a can of worms if, you know, what services I don't use, even as a resident, right? You know, I'm I don't use senior services, so do I not pay that portion of my taxes or, or you know, sue or whatever? I understand that, but I'm not saying that I want to privatize. I'm saying I just showed you the cost of it. I'm willing to stay. Wow, that got louder. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to stay with the town if I can pay what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking to. I don't need to privatize it. I'm just that was an example, an analysis. I get it. You have to pay biz. You have to pay your taxes as part of doing business and all that. But I'm just saying, I would like it to look a little fairer. That's all on that end. Uh, only question I have: Can you give me the exact or approximate uh, assessed value of the business park right now? Um, right now, it is. It's right there. It's in 2022. They assessed it at 32 million. Yeah, I'm not seeing it on the sheet that I have here. Sorry, that's why I asked the question. Mm -hmm. Um, so you don't have it. It's up on the, it's up on the board. So right now, 21, it was 24, and now it's 32. Okay, I, yeah, we'll wait till you guys. Yeah, I guess I, I you know, I, 
I needed the board to chime in on this. Sure. There, I mean, we have to talk yeah. as a group and. I mean, I'm, I'd be willing to come and meet with mm -hmm. you guys too to talk and, about anything if you need me mm -hmm. to know where I'm at. Right, but, but I just kind of wanted to kind of show you this. Were there uh, on that sheet? Are there 12 credits on there for each month? Yeah, or? it goes January to December. Mm -hmm. And you right you don't get enough credit to offset the cost of the. Right. Not even close. No, no not even close. Well, like I said, I'm not looking to eliminate the mm -hmm. town picking up my trash. I just, I would like it to be fair. That so maybe we need to analyze to the credit that she's getting for the service. Those haven't been looked at since I've been here. Have they with you, Jerry, since you've been here? Uh, not, not that Those I recall, but, but I think what we're gonna need to do is maybe go back and look at this competitively to what private industry is doing mm -hmm. you know because it, it, it's been a contention for years because everybody pays their garbage tax on the assessment sure um, so you can have two neighbors one house is worth a hundred thousand one's worth three hundred thousand mm -hmm. one person pays more to pick up his garbage than the guy next door right it's it's not an exact science but I understand from the biz business point of view that that's not even close to being competitive in my book right and you and I mean the businesses pay the majority of your town taxes so we need to be here to make you here too I just right. wonder like I will have to compare what other towns do I well I kind of looked into Amherst and I did not see a garbage tax on Amherst at all because I looked at the Boulevard Mall I looked at I even looked at the th um, the Eastern Hills yeah. Mall mm -hmm. I think they're they contracted. Do. I think they're contracted. But out. they still pick up. You got to pay it on your. Um, but it's a flat fee per unit. They charge a flat fee per unit. Yeah. And, no. uh, you know, there there are other municipalities that do the flat fee, but there are other places that do what we do with the ad valorem. So any dollar that somebody doesn't pay in trash tax here, someone else is going to have to pay. Right. So if if X pays less, A, B, and C are going to have to pick up the rest of that tab in order because the district needs the funds that it needs to to operate. Yeah, City of Buffalo's flat fee too. Mm -hmm. And they even charge a flat fee to the commercial, even though, though they're really not. Well, where it gets to be different, and even in my situation, because they'll, they'll probably give us as many garbage tilts we want, but because of the amount that we generate, uh, I've even got my own cardboard packer, because it doesn't make any sense to you know, throw it mm -hmm. in the garbage for the city sanitation department to pick it up. But it's on our own because of the amount that we generate uh, to, we're on our own when it comes to, uh, you know, roll away containers or anything. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. okay thank Tina. you. Yeah, thank you for, for coming and ex explaining your situation. Okay. Uh, next, we have um, Jillian Gorman King, drug free community application process. Hello, everybody. Um, I put a packet in front of everyone. So you should have this. Um, so the reason I wanted to come today is that the application has come out for the Drug Free Community Grant. It is due April 11th. So I wanted to provide the town with all the information that they need um, in order for how we would be involved in the grant process. So what you'll see there, the organization who will be the fiscal agent for this grant would be the Prevention Council of Erie County. They are not affiliated with the county. They are just a separate 501c3. They are the organization that already comes in to all the Cheektowaga district schools to do um, substance abuse prevention programming. So it made sense to obviously um, work with them and enhance their programs and then have them uh, you know, offer different uh, services with us. So you have a quick you know, bio on them in case there's any further information you wanted. So the other portion after that is um, the grant application notification approval form. So Connie Miner has been involved in this process. Um, she's been coming to the meetings. She would be um, submitting this grant as a portion of the in-kind benefits that the town would be giving to this grant. Um, it's not an extremely comprehensive grant, so she doesn't think that it's you know, going to take very much time. Um, but obviously, I want approval before she puts any pen to paper. So I, I would be submitting this. So what's the uh, 125000 per year 
in kind service. That's basically what we have to offer is a match of 125,000, but what can be included in that is the volunteer time of the coalition members. Um, I, we are going to do, so if you look at the MOU, which is on the next page, um, mm -hmm. it has the responsibilities of the town and under that, um, there's a portion, a percentage of my time and then one of my staff's time, um, which includes attending meetings, which includes helping with programming, anything involved with the grant um, can be accounted for time. So that would all be, nothing would cost the town monetarily. Um, we would also, if in, the board is in agreement, give the uh, program coordinator who would be hired, we would give, the town would give them office space a telephone and computer access because as we discussed, um, Dawn is here from Prevention Resource Center. If we have any questions, she works with all the coalitions in Western New York area. She's familiar, uh, this has been done before. Um, so the program coordinator would be hired by the Prevention Council of Erie County, but would be housed in uh, the Youth and Recreation Department building so that we could offer programming along with them, we could enhance their programming, they could enhance our programming. So we would then, my staff would work with them, that would be the portion of their salary, and then I would have the 5% just to um, communication with preventative counsel about time and attendance and things like that. Um, and like I said, the town would offer uh, office space, computer access and phones. These are all things the town already has. Um, in fact, they're already set up in my department. We have some, um, some work sites that are utilized by part-time staff, so it's already ready to go. Um, it would be nothing, again, the town would be then, if we were to give these in-kind services, we would get $125,000 a year for five years of services infused to the town and the youth of the town but it will come through, the funds will come through the Prevention Council of Erie County, who will be working in collaboration with Youth and Recreation and um, the town in general. So, and then the, I believe the last page is, so I have spoken to um, the other councils in the area, and we actually have to submit a letter of mutual cooperation if any of the zip codes overlap. So face-to-face, -face, the Kids Escaping Drugs Coalition in West Seneca and the Focus Coalition in Lancaster, we do have overlapping zip codes. So we would just sign a letter of mutual cooperation that we would essentially work together to offer services in those uh, zip codes. And that's common practice. Um, but I have reached out to those organizations. I have reached out to the um, Amherst Task Force. Um, they're all willing to work in collaboration with us. Uh, so, could you go into detail of the services we'll get from this? Sure, so basically you'll get a full-time staff member um, and then you'll have two other part-time staff members. That full-time staff member would uh, be in charge of uh, creating, implementing, and managing programs for youth within the borders of the town of Cheektowaga. They would also uh, provide supplies you know, for that programming um, as well as education services. So like. Um, Prevention Resource Center and other organizations that work in conjunction with them, we would have full access to anything they have. Does that answer your question, Supervisor? Well, uh, like, so what's the goal here? To, so kids don't start using? So it's prevention and education. That's okay. the main goal. That's what I yes, yeah. yes. Um, I did, um, Council Member Jasinski, I did also talk with the Save the Michaels though. I know you have spoken with them as well. I talked with Alex um, about collaborating. So Supervisor, we could also potentially, they, they're mostly mm -hmm. involved with um, like rehab and treatment, but that's something we could also collaborate with them that if we have identified an individual that needs that, we could have that full wraparound. But mm -hmm. majority of what we would do would be prevention and education with the schools and with other youth servicing organizations. It's imperative. Go ahead, Michael. Did you want to say anything? No, I, I think Save the Michaels would be a good agency to deal with. And one thing that really caught my interest is that they have a specialized group just for women. And talking with other people, it seems like, you know, women are you know, their drug abuse is, is on the rise like it's never been in the past. So um, I do like the idea of Alex being involved. In fact, uh, I'm hoping that 
uh, she'll be able to uh, attend our next uh, town board meeting. I spoke with her and I believe she does plan on it because her and I will be meeting after that time to figure out the best way we can collaborate. And I also offered her, she'd like to come to the coalition meetings. Um, you know, we also have a representative from every district within town. Uh, we have, you know, represented, we have four youth representatives, one from every district. We have police, um, the chief and another Lieutenant are on there. We have tons of youth servicing agencies, parents, um, you know, other substance abuse organizations. So we have a lot of uh, people around the table that I think can do some really good work. That'd be wonderful. And do you have any statistically, has this shown to work? Yes, actually, um, okay. I'm glad that you asked that because we were just looking at some, um, the DFC, so the grant will come through um, the CDC, just so you're aware, it's, it's actually changed. Um, but the DFC grant, the Drug-Free Community Grant, it says right on uh, their website, a small amount of federal funding combined with a local match of resources and volunteer support can reduce youth drug use. Um, and they, they do have um, documentation that shows that, that you know, Wonderful. different. Um, yeah, sure, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, right. John can see. Go ahead, John. Yeah. Who, uh, you want to introduce her, Joe? Yes, uh, this, is, this is Dawn Sagerman. Uh, she's with Preventative Resource Center. She mm -hmm. helped us uh, receive the grant that we got that was allowed us to do the testing in the schools um, to collect the data for mm -hmm. this grant. Um, and she'll help with management uh, once we receive the grant as well. Nice to meet you, Dawn, and nice thank you. Nice to yeah. be here. I, I would just say they have, because we work in all eight counties of Western New York with community coalition. I'm sorry, Dawn, could you get a little closer to the mic? Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, we work with all eight counties with the community coalitions um, whose um, efforts are um, substance misuse for particularly for youth. And Chief DeWaga has one of the strongest people's um, co coalition as far as who's sitting around the table. The support so is what outstanding. So what age do you start educating? Uh, so the, the grant is for ages 12 to 18 mm -hmm. specifically. That doesn't mean that if you're 11 and a half, we don't talk to you okay or, okay so it's just it's more so that's the target group. yeah exactly it's, it's youth it's not 18 mm -hmm. you know it's not over 18 it's not adults it's mm -hmm. primarily but again you can still incorporate some of those things and hopefully prevent youth prevention will prevent other people from you know yes. adults from using so correct sounds great any uh, oh one more question i did have this memorandum of understanding this is coming up or it was signed already so no this is this would be coming up this is basically would be between the town and um the prevention council and it would basically be for that individual um the staff member who would be housed at the town so it would be in reference to what they would be allotted to utilize you know the expectations that they would have of us and the expectations that we would have of them in regards to that because it says what um, October first, twenty twenty. Yes, so that's when um, we will find out about funding, um, middle of April, and then the funding will begin. August. Uh, or sorry, thank you. <laughs> August, I know. Oh, okay. um, in August, and then um, the funding will begin October first. Nice, just in time for the school year. Yes. Right. So, and we're actually hoping um, to have the coalition. We have an action plan. We've done. I mean, this coalition has done phenomenal work. We already have an action plan set for the first twelve months of what we'd like to institute. Um, so, pretty much as soon as we get the funding, we'll be we'll be doing. So, any council members have more questions? Any questions, comments? We're yes. hoping, and basically what I wanted to make sure is that everyone was on board because I, I didn't mm -hmm. want, obviously, Connie or any of us to do mm -hmm. any work towards the grant application before we had official board mm -hmm. approval. So I what think I'll, she has to put in a resolution anyway, Yes, right? that's the, the one, mm -hmm. the documentation, the second one on here would be the grant notification, but I just wrote it out to show you kind of what her and I had discussed. She's mm -hmm. aware, she's aware that I'm here. She wanted me to do this as well. Um, we're, we're in constant communication. Um, and then the MOU would be, we would just have to sign that, mm -hmm. um, you know, with uh, the Prevention Council of Erie County. I also gave Attorney Dudziak a copy. So feel free to look it over and then maybe at the next meeting I can submit these to go through. And then any mm -hmm. questions prior to that, we can iron out exactly what that language would be. Um, I can also put any of you in touch with the um, contacts at Prevention Council, uh, Robin Mann and Vanita, I'm blanking on her last name. 
Yeah. Vanita, and we're both Jameson. blanking out her last name. Jameson. Jameson. <laughs> Vanita Jameson. Those are the two contacts. I'm sure they'd be more than happy to meet. Mm -hmm. um, they're very excited. They have done this process previously, so they're well aware of how it goes. Wonderful. Good, good job. Thank okay. you. Thank very you very much. much. Thank you. Okay. Um, Chris Adamsack, uh, Council Member Adamsack, just uh, wanted to discuss work session and town board meetings. Yes, so I just wanted to chat real fast about the work session and board meetings. The last few work session and board meetings have been very long, and I just wanted to bring it up for a discussion again about starting earlier or separating them on different days. I don't know what every, everybody's feeling is, but staying, you know, being on these work session board meetings until 10, almost 11 at night is getting very long. Anybody? Well, yeah, I agree with you, Chris. And it's li like I said, uh, I think probably the, big, the biggest thing, it seems like all our time is taken up. We're always short of time. There have been multiple occasions where we started board meetings late, much after 7 o'clock. Uh, this went on for years where we had it on the off week. Uh, so it was another evening the way I look at it. It's part of the territory. That's what we get paid for. And we need more open discussions, not just taking up meetings uh, to take, take up time. I mean, there, there's always town business that kind of gets left on a back shelf to a certain degree. And I think it would give us a lot more time basically to prepare for town board meetings and prepare for the, the taxpayers doing it a week before versus then an hour before or right up to the deadline. Yeah, it just just gets too, too close. Yeah, and that would be my choice to have it on the off week. Anybody else? No, I'm okay with an off week and going one week work session, one week board meeting. I mean, we've tried going back to back doing them. We've tried going with an eight o'clock board meeting start. That didn't work for residents. We've tried bumping it to seven o'clock. That's not working right now. Um, I'm fine with meeting every Tuesday, one being a work session and one being a board meeting. Yeah, I'd be okay with uh, making the switch. In, a, in any organization like ours, it's difficult to, to mm -hmm. foster effective communication. And, you know, our situation is dysfunctional, so I think we need the off weeks more than, uh, than other organizations, more than other boards. I think it'd be very good for us to meet on the off weeks and then have our regular meetings there. So, and not just to have some open discussion, but if something does come up that we don't feel rushed and we have more mm -hmm. time to really look through things because when we discuss it at, in short, you know, we, we want to summarize our thoughts and it results in miscommunication. But if we have more time to really work stuff out, we can understand where each other's coming from and make better decisions. And I, th I think it's important that we kind of put out there, I don't think we need the department heads there every Tuesday, just at the work session piece and not the board meeting piece, because that's asking a lot of them. So everybody can do the, because uh, I know we had yeah. problems trying to get a day of the week before. I'm kind of, yeah, I was, what about Kim? You don't want my opinion on this because I am against it. That's true. She'll, she'll have to be there. Um, they are, both the work sessions and the town board meetings will be on YouTube. And um, I have a concern also about, since we have a consent agenda, our meetings are very short. So we're going to have people come here for the meeting and they're going to be out of here in 15, 20 minutes, maybe a half hour. Unless we have public hearings or something, our meetings are quite short. Mm -hmm. Correct, Linda, and that is part of my objection to it is that you're going to be here at 7 o'clock for a meeting that's going to last 20 minutes. And don't you have a conflict, though, Linda? You have a couple oh, I have meetings, uh, traffic third, safety. The third, yeah, the third Tuesday of the month. Our board rules do allow for two board members to call for special meetings. Mm -hmm. and yeah. It just doesn't just have to be the town supervisor and one other board yeah, member. Absolutely. Any two board members can do that. Maybe that's something we have to do a little bit more often. Which, what, what if we call for a monthly special meeting to have an open forum? Mm -hmm. Or if we created a standing open meeting like once every other month that didn't mm -hmm. require the clerk for example to be here and someone else kept minutes we can do something maybe that way if that's with if that's legal and allowed we can look into that to make sure but mm -hmm. we don't necessarily need it 
every single time, but we do need more opportunities as a board to, to get around the same table, look each other in the eye and work through some more of these things. Mm -hmm. yeah, I would like to have a monthly meeting. I think that would be a good idea to get together and work on you know things that we kind of put on the back burner because we didn't have enough True. time. Uh, or do you want to pick a different day the week before a meeting too? Is there any other day? I mean, or do you want to do whatever? You're gonna to have to figure out what day or what. We're not voting on this tonight. No, but that's why if you're gonna put something together, we do have to have a board resolution um, when our meetings are. And if you want a, a standing work session the first Tuesday of the month. What about the start time? Of the. Back, the 5.15, can we go back to five o'clock? Well, um, Council Member Jasinski, you had the issue with the time, right? Yeah, it, uh, you know, as you know, this is not all of our first job, so it, it does um, tend to at times conflict with uh, meeting times. Well, he can be a few minutes late for the work session, too. Mm hmm I mean, it's not, you know, that he has to be here right at five. Well, my biggest thing is, is that when we present things or we're talking about things, you know, the only time we talk about it is at the work session. I think that there's, there's zero collaboration. And the only time we try to talk about it is at the work session. And I, I don't find that our, our work sessions are, you know, I don't think we get what we put into it. Well, I think as far as timing goes, and I can attest to it, uh, sometimes every meeting I have to re rearrange my schedule a multitude of times. Uh, union negotiations, meeting with department heads. Uh, it, it, was, it is what it is, and uh, I guess for the, the money, money we get paid, uh, it's part of our job. It's accepted. You know, uh, when you put your hand on a Bible and take your oath of office, you should be doing, doing the job. Uh, I certainly, even myself personally, do not like having to eat dinner at 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. It's not one of my best choices, but I do it. Um, didn't they used to have the work session at 6? Maybe we could do 6 o'clock. Well, historically, we always did the work session at 6. Yes, what I'm saying. Why not have the work session at 6? And then 6 we would be a good time. Board meeting at 6, then. We, why are we rushing here at 5 o'clock, then? If we're going to have an, you know, two different... I, did, I didn't understand what you just said. 6 o'clock could be the work session on the off week. Mm -hmm. I'd be in favor of that. Here at, at five o'clock. And then what time is the board meeting? It'll be, it's, it could be at six o'clock. Or keep it at seven, whatever you want. Be the There'd be less time. material to cover anyways. Later, we may be here a lot later too. Didn't you, you said you used to be here till 10 o'clock, Jerry. Yeah, there were, there were occasions, <laughs> uh, you know, when there were big projects going on or whatever, I can vaguely remember one, and I think we finally, finally uh, walked out at quarter to 11 at night. Mm -hmm. but Once there, in a while. There were a lot of things discussed, mm -hmm. and, and this is part of the problem I've had. And I'll give you an example. Even with the re resolutions tonight, we're hiring people. I have no clue what they look like. I have no clue where they come from. I don't know their background. But I come to a board of me, and I have to rubber stamp these people blindly, not knowing if they're even suitable for their job. Would anybody in their, this room do that? Anybody. But you can call the department head and, and Brian Horsman. I'm sure he'd give you that information. But the biggest thing is the time factor. No, ahead of time you could call. Yeah, but if we were, if we were doing the meetings earlier, mm -hmm. but generally you know, they come out on a Wednesday. I agree. I hate to say mm -hmm. it, but, but uh, I have a life and a business to run too. You know, and it's it's like I said, uh, sometimes trying to check up on this thing, there, there just isn't enough time in my book. I agree. Should I think about it for mm -hmm. a few days? I know we and... revisit it over and over, but if we can come with a, a better plan, something. Mm -hmm. I mean, the best solution we've gotten with this group so far seems to have been the five o'clock, seven o'clock arrangement. Yeah. You know, I'm just going to say again, we can call a monthly special meeting if we needed it for whether it's open forum or there are a certain project we wanted to work through some things through or something like our ARPA funds. We had a special meeting for that recently. I mean, we can do those kind of things and do that. It would mean mm -hmm. more frequent meetings. And instead of having, you know, like the clerk was speaking about and Council Member Hammer was, having these 20-minute council meetings at 7 p.m. and then having these other meetings on the off weeks, 
you know, it's, it's, it is hard to get people around the table. And I appreciate what Council Member Jasinski said about, you know, having another job and these other things going on. You know, uh, I know Councilman polarski has got other things going on. He's busy and you mentioned running your business. Mm -hmm. We've all got other things going on. Yeah. You know, um, I've got another job outside of this. I prioritize this job. I let them know I got to be here on a certain day and time. You're not keeping me away from here. I think this is my 101st meeting. I haven't missed a single one, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, not bragging, but you got to make time for this is the point, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll give it some thought. I think it's worth looking into again because I, I do feel rushed. We got to be always on, you know, I got to be watching the clock and we can only have so many and some last minute things come up and we still didn't do the town board resolution. So um, I think it's a good idea to take a look at it. And even I'm, I'd be willing to do a standing first of the month Tuesday of the month work session too. But it sometimes doesn't always work out. We're gonna have all the things ready to discuss that day, so. Okay, we gotta go through the town board resolution items. We do have a couple um, appointments tonight to the uh, police department. Uh, appointment of Police Sergeant uh, Mark Fada and uh, appointment of Police Officer Andrew Natty. Any questions on those? And it doesn't look like we have any public hearings tonight. Um, then we have the warrant. Any questions on that? And then we have the um, rescind resolution 2014-50 full value for tax assessments. Um, Michael, did you have anything to say on that? Because you're the mover on it. What do you want? Yeah, um, you know, no, no matter how you try to skin this thing, if your house is assessed at a higher value, you're going to pay higher taxes. Do you I don't have another I... thing on your on at the same time because you're an echo in here. So mm -hmm. you have. You're only coming through on one thing. That's all I got. I can't hear any of you. We just have to talk louder, but you're coming in from two things. So can you turn one off, Jim? Okay, go ahead, Michael. <laughs> No, my whole thing is, is no matter how you try to skin this thing or make heads or tails of it, if your house is assessed at a higher value, you're going to pay higher taxes. You, you can't tell me that the people who live in an area where their houses are valued lower are going to pay the same amount of tax. And let's be frank and honest with it. I, I can't be think that anybody sitting in, in the board would say that they'd be in favor of paying more more money. Well, Mike, I don't think that's the point. And I was heavily involved in this in 2014, 2015. And just to keep numbers relatively simple, in 2014, the equalization rate was 62%. On a $100,000 house, you paid taxes on $62,000. You with me so far? Yep. At a rate of approximately a little over $17. 62,000 times $17, uh, I know what the number is, it's $1,054. When we went to the 100% assessment, it automatically dropped the tax rate down to approximately $9. So on a $100,000 house, you were paying $9 per thousand. That's $900, isn't it? The well, is if, if that was down. the case, Jerry, then why wouldn't Elma, you know, be in favor of lowering their, you know, assessment having a reassessment yeah why well wouldn't for, for sake sake of another term i do not understand the day is the day is going to come sooner or later and i've said this for years i worry about chicktawaga in a lot of cases by going to this hundred percent which made it much much simpler for a lot of people uh just the mathematics alone we did six meetings around town some people were happy about it some people were not and the part i do not understand that hundred hundred percent valuation was on every single tax bill back then. The equalization rate is a number to state hands down when we don't reassess. Do you know where that comes from? Where comes the equalization the rate started from? 
comes from the state. To 13 colonies. That's how antiquated and old this is. And every time that number drops, the tax rate has to go up. We still raise the same amount of money. It's just divvied up differently. Now, if we raise $78 million by taxes, it doesn't make any difference what the assessments are. That's what affects the tax rate to raise that amount of money. In a lot of cases, and generally on reassessments, I think anybody can explain it to you. Generally, when there's a reassessment, a third of the taxes stay the same, a third go up, a third go down. Now, I know, off the top of my head, my, my assessment in the last probably four or five years has probably gone up $100,000. And this is the way I, I look at it, whether you're young or old. Why would you want your house to be worth less? Would you well, want to buy a house for $100,000? It's a drive by assessment. It's not even a true evaluation of your house. I could say your house is worth 50 bucks. What does it matter? It, it's all about what it equates to at the end of the day. I got a letter last year saying my house was assessed at $63,000 more. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to equate into me paying more tax. Not necessarily. Depends what the it's one of three things. It's the assessments, it's the town and 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 county's budget, and it's the schools. So it's a three-headed monster. But the assessment, if your if your house is worth more money, they're gonna want more money. It's simple math. Right. It does generate more. So I, I think that after last year, this is my argument anyway. After last year, we got everybody up. Excuse me? What are you looking at? Oh, for? I thought I heard you say no, something. No, I didn't say a word. Oh, you mumbled something. No, so. I did not. Okay. Sorry, Supervisor. <laughs> so anyway, last year we, we all came up to 100%. And we, we looked, I sent everybody the proposed, con well, the contract that we already approved through GAR, and there were two choices. And one of them is to start uh, reevaluating but the neighborhoods, and that's what got us into the mess we were in in 2019 uh, by doing the spot assessments based on neighborhood sales, um, number of sales, and the increase in the sales prices. So this, by taking away this 100% and having us to stay there, we, it would give us more flexibility that we didn't have to stay at 100, and we could t um, do the, con um, the assessments cyclical every three or four years. Well, we should do cyclical assessments, 100%. Right. That's what I'm 100% on. Neighborhoods every single year. And then you have certain neighbors, hoods that are assessed two times, three times in the four year period. And then some haven't been reassessed at all. And that's where we found that happened um, back in when we were looking at this in 2019. So we're all up to par in as of last year, 2021, and I can't imagine any other taxpayers want to have to go through that whole process again about coming to a meeting, figuring out how to challenge your assessment. Plus, it's an expense on the town to reassess and work with these challenges right and it's on the back of the taxpayers that assessment we're paying a third yeah, party company how much do, do we even have the the numbers on how much it's going to cost us to pay our uh it was in that agreement i had sent in, in, you know to everyone can i just finish council member okay so um that that was I, I just don't think we should be doing the neighborhoods and um and go back to the cyclical reassessments every three or four years instead of every year and um it, it it's easy to say you can challenge your assessment but how do you say that to an 80 or 90 year old person who is not tech savvy i know i got a, a mother or mother-in-law and a father that i had to fight their assessments and my own they do not understand the challenge process and only five towns out of 28 towns in uh, Erie County, there's 28 towns and cities, including Buffalo and Lackawanna, are at 100%, five of them, which include Cheektowaga, Clarence, Grand Island, and Newse Newstead. And then, what about, uh, Tina was here from uh, Apple Tree Business Park, explaining how unfair it is for the business park to be paying for our 
garbage tax based on um, 100% tax and, or the assessment. And I had a couple examples that I pulled up. Uh, so I have, I have a $405,000 full market value assessed house. Their garbage tax a year is $638.26. And I happen to know the homeowner on this house, and I know there's only two people in there. Yes, yes, the garbage tax. And it, if we look at, yeah, if we look at a house that's only assessed at $73,000, it's only $115. So, I mean, so what makes the $405,000 house at 638, do they get more services for garbage? Same services. More garbage, I, I don't know. There are two seniors living there uh, versus somebody um, that's only assessed at 73,000 is so paying then, 115. Then you have, on the other flip, flip side of that, you have a senior living in a house who has an apartment and there's only two people working there, or two people living there, and they pay 600 and some dollars. Exactly. So it's well, not fair that way either. Well, it's not. No, either way. It, it's not, but then I'm saying is it depends on your assessment. Instead of, I, I think we, if anything, we have to figure out a way to do a flat garbage tax instead of this assessment. So anyway, Council Member Nowak, you wanted to speak. Sure. First off, this is not a resolution about garbage taxes. And if we do a flat garbage tax, the less your property is worth, the more your taxes are going to go up. It's going to be a shift from the more valuable properties to the less valuable properties. I'd be happy to sit down with any of you and run those numbers. But when we're talking about the comparables that were provided up here, they were properties that were $40,000, $132,000 compared to a $32 million property. They're apples and oranges, but we're not talking about garbage taxes right now. That's a whole different matter. I do have some questions about this for the movers uh, regarding the unintended consequences of this. I just, I've got a handful of them if, if I can ask them and get some type of response or an answer. First is if this resolution passes, does it mean folks will see a tax increase or a tax decrease? It's part of it. Taxes are three things, school, town and county, and assessments. So this is one piece of the pie. We got to slice it up three different ways. This is one attempt. We have to go after the other two. And you need to um, take the budget into consideration. We won't know. So this will not, this resolution will not increase or decrease taxes. We All don't it know. does, all it does is say we're not going to assess properties or we may not assess properties. We're not required to assess properties. It has nothing to do with tax rates. It has nothing to do with equalization rates. It's just rescinding a resolution for full valuations. Second question I had, does a reassessment increase the amount of money the government collects from all taxpayers? No. It doesn't. So it, this has nothing to do with that. We're talking about who pays what share. If something, somebody's property is a lot more valuable than somebody else's, maybe we shouldn't be taxing people at the exact same dollar amount. Maybe you should pay a little bit more if your property's worth a little bit more. It's an That's absolute unfair, tax. Brian. It's a flat That's tax totally unfair. Per thousand dollars value of your property. Just because I make more and I live in a more expensive house means you should take more of my money. That's a socialistic it's, it's a government. It's a flat tax. It's a flat tax based on the value of your property. It's a pretty conservative proposition. So you're uh, in, I mean, you're in agreement with saying that tax. you're willing to give more money out of your pocket. Is that what you're saying? It's the value of your property. This is pretty simple stuff. We're Absolutely. not saying if, if, if it depends on where you live. It's the same tax rate per thousand dollars value of your home. Third question I had. If we decide not to assess based on current fair market values, does that mean, what does that mean for the residents that can end up overpaying in property taxes? Elaborate on fair market value. I'm sorry, say that again? Elaborate on the word fair market value. I'll expand on that. I'm not the mover or the second of the resolution. Well, you we asked, have, you're asking we a question. I mean, I'm just trying to help you answer your question. You're using terminology. I, fair is fair. I, I, like Diane said, it should be cyclical. 
this shouldn't be based off what areas of the hot market and what houses are selling for because they're selling at a higher dollar amount. I mean, that, if that's the most unfair thing I've ever heard. Well, the, the, the purchases, the sales in, in the buyers, they make the market. What we're saying is we're basically going to ignore the market for a short period of time. And most states do cyclical reassessments. So at As least we we're should. discussing the prospect of doing this a couple of years down the road and not pulling an Elma and doing nothing and going down to 3%. What's wrong with Elma? The They're, the kudos to their board for sticking up for it. If you look through statewide, there's a correlation between the larger municipalities that do regular reassessing and the smaller ones that don't because you have more sales than the larger ones. Fourth question I had, resolution 2022-74, authorize the settlement of, a, of class action litigation. What impact do you guys think this will have on, uh, on uh, potential litigation in the future if we rescind this? And it's the Adams et al. versus Town of Chittawaga. Not everybody's gonna be on board with it, nor everybody's gonna understand it. So of course there's gonna be pushback on people that don't fully understand it. Question five, do we have the money in the budget to defend against the legal challenges that can be coming our way? You're, you're, on, the, you know, you're on the budget committee. I think you can answer that question yourself. Wow. The answer to that would be no, we don't. But Brian, so, how do you know you wouldn't get a uh, class action lawsuit for, for the people in the neighborhoods that were targeted and singled out uh, for reassessment this year if you did it? by neighborhoods. How do you know you won't get it? You're putting a hypothetical against literal litigation. I brought up literal litigation that was brought before us and this board settled it last July and you're putting up a hypothetical against that. We should worry about the material threat that we've already had to deal with and not some hypothetical that may possibly come later. Sixth question I had, do you believe that this action would lead to an increase in Article 7 actions? I can't answer that. Well, that's something we should be able to answer. Well, that's Number hypothetical also. No. Oh, there's, but the Article 7 actions every year, it's not hypothetical. I don't know what I'm going to eat for dinner we'll tomorrow night. We'll get Article 7s no matter what. But we're going to get an increase of those. So any, any savings we might get in doing the neighborhood reassessing or spending on that, we're going to spend it in legal. Uh, and so <laughs> last question I have. Uh, will waiting three to four years mean smaller or larger changes in property tax bills for our residents? Okay, any other comments, <clears throat> questions on this resolution? All right. well, I've got a, go oh, sorry, Joe. <clears throat> I've just got a, co a comment and a quick question. Um, <coughs> my comment is the assessments do not dictate our taxes. It, it's the tax rate and the budget set forth by the seven of us up here. Less spending, less taxing. More spending, more taxes. That's really what it comes down to. So we either take a hard look at the budget and, and cut it bone dry and, and, and go as low as we could, and that's less taxes or we provide services, quality services that impact the quality of life in this town that costs a little bit, and it goes on to the tax base that way. My question is though, Supervisor, you passed this resolution. Councilman, friendly amendment to that. We can also develop, which we'll get to in the next resolution, and add to the total taxable property value and distribute that a little bit more. But yeah. you're, you're, you're on, you're you're on a roll correct. there, go on. Yes, you are correct. Um, in 2014, you were on the resolution and voted mm -hmm. yes for this, and now you're rescinding it tonight. What is it that has changed from then till now? Kind of help me understand, because maybe well, I'm missing okay. something. Okay, that's a great question. Yeah, I didn't realize the impact it was going to have until we had the 2019 work session and Brian came out with all the maps, the colored maps of areas in town. And I think you were assessed twice and some areas were assessed maybe once or not at all. That's where I, it was eye-opening to me to see that we're not doing it fairly. Either you do a full town wide or you don't do any. You don't target neighborhoods at all. That to me is unfair. That's where that I changed my mind in 2019. Well, Did you not look at your tax bill? Did it not say assess the value of your house on your tax bill? Hey, Michael, can you wait? Um, Jerry speaking and I'll call on you. Okay. okay. No, but I remember the conversation very well that we had about this assessment mm -hmm. and I do believe Correct me if I'm wrong, Christine, that you had said in three years you were reassessed three times. I looked it up. Your house was never reassessed. Every time that equalization rate dropped, 
Ms. Adams' ex taxes went up. It's a simple, simple math formula. No matter how you look at it, we still have to raise the same amount of money. And it's very a simple math equation. Going with full value, <coughs> the tax rate becomes less in a lot of cases, not all. It does save people, people money. The longer you let this go, and relative um, to what I've, conversation I've had with other board members, and the biggest thing, and this is what nobody understands, you see these ridiculous offers, price wars, people outbidding others on houses. Well, the sad part about it, the person that sold the house is making out because he's walking away from his taxes. The people offering these outrageous amounts, way, way over market value, are creating their own monster. To a certain degree, their tax bill is going to be self-inflicted. And on a side note, uh, relative to Mr. Jasinski's remark, we have nothing, nothing to do with school taxes. We are only a collection point for it. And That's I agree true. that you know, they are based on the assessment, but who sets the school budget? Everybody in the district who votes for the school budget or not. Absolutely. And a lot of people do not vote, that's why it gets passed. To me, uh, listen, I, I can say this honestly, you can look it up, I pay over $6,000 a year in school taxes. And I'm, I'm not complaining. But it's like, like I said, I had done so much research into it with the former supervisor we had talked to so many people, and the biggest thing, this 100% shows up on your tax bill no matter what. You know, and it's like I said, uh, what I started to say earlier, if you bought a house for $110,000 in 10 years from now, would you want it worth, worth 60 or 50 or less? Does that make any sense to anybody? You know, why would you want to devalue the largest purchase most people ever make in their lifetime? And sure, you know, I hate to say it, but dying in taxes is a way of life. Do I like all of it? No. But the biggest thing everybody has to understand, a lot of these rules are handed down from the state of New York. We implement them. And it's like I said, we change this, and I agree with uh, Brian Nowak, we will probably wind up getting another lawsuit against this. And you mark my words, there's people, this is going to be let go, and the jump next time might be greater than it was because, and I don't know if anybody remembers this, 2014-15, when we did this whole assessment, when we went to the 100%, and it was a hard decision to make. The following year, do you know how many homes we reassessed? No one. For the very simple reason, you could take your tax bill from 2014 and directly compare it to going at 100% valuation in 15. I could not count the phone calls and emails I've got being thanked because a lot of people, some of them were 20 bucks, 40 bucks, $150. There's a lot of people, their taxes did go down. Not by much, but at least it was a savings. The Last thing I wanted to add to this, and well, I had two um, questions for the assessor. I'm sorry, Councilman. Yeah, just to Brian Plarsky's comment, have you looked at your tax bill? Does it not say the assessed value of your property on that tax bill? Correct. It shows the assessed value. There you go. What we spend here as a town board. If we're not asking for, let's say, hypothetically, $80 million and we're asking for 60, there's going to be less money needed by the town. Therefore, there's less money asked of the taxpayers to fit the bill for it. It's just simple math. You know, your house will sell for whatever it sells for. Just because the assessment says your house is worth $60,000 doesn't mean it's going to sell for $60,000. I think that's what we're, that's a fear tactic. Your house is going to sell for what somebody's willing to pay for it. So I'm not a real estate agent, but I know looking at some of the sales, because Councilman Kaminsky got me onto this. The uh, Buffalo News publishes the, the real estate transactions every week. It, you see the assessed values of a property versus what people pay for it. We hear a lot about the bidding wars, and the buyers and the sellers make the market. Are people paying less than the assessed values for the houses or more? They're, wait, they're paying Depends way more. Depends on where you're at demographically. Way more. But I do have two questions for the assessor. If, if she would have, if she has a moment. Although I don't mean to put you on the firing line, but so uh, the first question I have has to do with uh, lawsuits, litigation, class action, those kind of things. Uh, what I saw when I looked at the budget is we had $100,000 in 21. We cut that down to 80000 in 22. If we're dealing with more uh, Article 7s, maybe I should back up. You think we would be dealing with more of those, in your professional opinion, if we rescinded this? Yes, if the equalization is um, 
Yeah, turn that on. If the equalization rate drops, the, the market value for those commercials goes up and they don't appreciate at the same value that the residentials. So yeah, with the 80,000, I mean, in your view, is that enough money to defend against Article 7s? Uh, not if it drops. I mean, no. right now I have probably 120 parcels in Article 7. And, and after the Adams versus the town lawsuit, do you think the state's watching us a little less or a little more? Oh, they're watching us, yes. So, I mean, again, this we would need money to defend against potential litigation if another class action were brought up in yes. regards to that. And again, it would be repeat based on what literally happened to this town not long ago. With the exception of we probably wouldn't settle, and if we don't settle, you're talking about a lot, uh, a lot larger legal bill. We and settled because we had sent out notices, but it, we wouldn't settle so easy, I wouldn't think, if we went back. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay. You know, maybe we can use some of the extra money and all the fuel lines we have in the budget to pay for this, right? Because nothing's happened to fuel uh, costs recently. Brian, you're just um, adding fuel here that really, these aren't facts. We don't know if there's going to be a, a, a lawsuit, and we also, don't know, first of all, we haven't voted if we wanna do the spot assessments versus the town-wide assessments. But it gives us, I believe, get rid of this 100% that we're bound to, gives us more flexibility that we don't have to do the spot reassessments, because those definitely aren't fair either, because you're not doing everybody. If you're gonna do a neighborhood, you, keep, you gotta do the whole town then, so. Anyway, let's go on to resolution number three. This is the negative seeker declaration for 6386 uh, Transit Road. Does anybody have any questions? Sean's here tonight. Uh, just if you can come up and speak to, um, not the project generally, but uh, having to do with drainage, water management, and the impact that the development's gonna have uh, on the sewer sanitary system. Sure, so let me address those topics in I believe the order. First was stormwater management, and of course I welcome the input of Pat Bowen, Nick and Rick. In terms of stormwater management, we will be required to implement a stormwater management system that complies with the stringent DEC stormwater quality and quantity standards. Including in those quantity standards is a need for such system to be adequate, to adequately handle a 100 year storm event. All of that to be verified by the engineering department as part of the site plan approval process. In terms of sewer, we're all aware that there's an off-site pump station that needs some existing repairs and then also some upgrades. We're in continued discussions with Mr. Bowen and the town about that topic. Keep in mind it's actually included as a zoning condition this evening to make sure it gets addressed before we connect into that system. One other topic that came up during the public hearing held by this board on February 22nd was wetlands and specifically federal wetlands. It is important to note there are no jurisdictional federal wetlands on this site. And that's per jurisdictional determination issued by the United States Army Corps of Engineers. There is a relatively large DEC freshwater wetland that extends onto the site, which I depicted in the PowerPoint presentation. We're not proposing any impacts to the wetland itself but only to the 100 foot adjacent area. And as mitigation, we're proposing 100 plus trees, wetland monuments, the walking trail, et cetera, et cetera. And then most importantly, what's held this up the longest has nothing to do with anyone in this room. It was a review by the New York State Department of Transportation. After working with them very closely over the course of literally the past year, ultimately they finally agreed that we could have a signalized driveway connection onto Transit Road. As I indicated, it's only the second time where I'm aware of they've allowed that prospectively, and it has been lined up with the school drop-off directly across the street. So I think we've come a long way mm -hmm. since we began this arduous process more than 18 months ago, and I'm hoping we're in a position finally where you could issue the negative declaration and approve the rezoning. Obviously, I did just watch the discussion about taxes, and as Councilmember Nowak indicated, this is going to generate tremendous amount of taxes, both for the benefit of the town, the school district, and the county on an annual basis. And we appreciate a lot of people in this room have made a lot of effort, including the members of the planning board, the town board, the EAC, and town department. So we're hopeful this can move forward. Then we have to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals. That queue in the future for site plan approval 
after we receive a recommendation from the planning board. If there's any other questions, I'd welcome the opportunity to address them. We're also so, approving the rezoning too tonight. Right, we have two resolutions that are in front of you. Um, a resolution to issue a negative declaration pursuant to seeker and a recommendation to approve the rezoning subject to the three conditions presented during the public hearing. Yes, Councilmember yeah. Hammer. I have a question for you again about the sewers. Sure. Um, Pat, if you could chime in on this too. What or how long is this going to take to get worked out as far as the sewers are going to go before he, I mean, he can't start building until we have that taken care of. That's, that's correct. The one thing we need to work out yet, Linda, is um, who's going to pay what share for the improvements to the pump station. Correct. I would note Mr. Young did previously submit a letter offering to make a, a, a what I believe is a large financial contribution of a payment of $100,000. And what's the cost going to be? I'd have to defer to the engineering department. I think it's a lot more than that, though. Yeah, I think the cost for construction and um, the estimated cost for construction and engineering design, I think, was like 425 somewhere on there, if I remember correctly. And, and other developments would benefit from that construction, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Yeah. And I believe some of that is also to address repairs that already need made today. So we would be making that $100,000 payment. We're also separately per the DEC policy for any project that generates more than 2,500 gallons of sanitary sewer flow per day, required to make a separate I and I payment or complete remediation to additional failing sewer lines. So we're we're we're, we're helping to address that situation long term, and we're hopeful we can reach a consensus on that topic as soon as possible. Because again, we don't want to reach a point where we're ready to begin, which we're hopefully in the near future, and we're stuck with that topic. Any other questions? Okay, then on a number resolution five then is the uh, negative seeker declaration for 234 Clover Place. Any questions on that? It's for the Ucrest Fire Department. And the approval of the rezoning of 234 Clover Place is six. And then we have several award of bids, um, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, I believe, are all award of bids. For usually, most of them are for either um, privately owned properties and maintenance issues. Any questions on those? The 16 was pulled, 17, or now we're, I think we're, the numbering's off. Uh, preventative maintenance program for town owned emergency generator systems. Does anybody have any questions on that? Next one is special inspection and testing services for geotechnical and structural construction services. Any questions on that? Next is the hazardous material inspections at town hall. This um, was, I think, related to the asbestos. Then 20 is the extend the shared service agreement with the village of Depew. Can we get a little update on that and talk about that a little bit? Yes. <clears throat> like, how's it going? How much time is being consumed on it? Oh, good. Rick Colburn, you have the floor here. Make sure the mic's on. Um, Councilman Polarski, yes, I've been there for about seven weeks now. Um, we have two hires right now that are presently working in Depew. Um, they've got um, new planning board kind of processes that we're implementing along with zoning board implementation. That's primarily what my services are. I'm not doing any CBA work. I'm not doing any inspections. I'm not really doing anything involvement specifically with their tasks, which I originally started with. Right now, it's more consultation and helping them with them learn the processes to provide those services to their boards. <coughs> um, they've had no real experience going before the planning board or zoning board from the code enforcement side. So the resolutions, <coughs> the actual planning processes, the um, seeker reviews, I'm helping them with those processes right now for hopefully the next month. We'll see how that goes. <coughs> I know when we initially talked about this, my concern was, hey, we're, we were talking four weeks. We're at week seven, we're looking to extend it again, another four weeks or so, that's 11 weeks, taken away from services from town of Chictawaga and, and taken away from you doing work here. 
we keep going forward with it. I mean, what yeah. is the end site? What's My intentions end? were to end it in, in the first um, process, except for the fact that the experience they've actually hired is not prepared really to represent the town in those actions. Hopefully we, we have a couple of meetings and I'll be able to set that up. Um, <coughs> that's kind of where I'm hoping to get away from. Honestly, I'm between 55 and 60 hours and I'm tired myself. To honestly, so I, I really do want to, I'm usually there seven and nine in the morning and then consulting as needed in the evenings. And like this, this body, I'm also here for this also. So um, it's starting to weigh on me also, I agree. But I, hopefully I, they're, they're requesting that service for a continuance until we at least get the boards squared away at those processes. And I, I don't really want to extend it further than this. Uh, Rick, you, you heard my views on it this morning and it's much the same, like an extension here I'm okay with that for now, but beyond that, I'd have a really big issue going beyond this I extension. So yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm not actually. I'm. I told them this would be my last term. Also, that's good because I sure. can't agree to it longer after this. Thank you, Rick. Okay. Resolution uh, next one is the purchase of computer equipment for the police department dispatch center. Any questions on that? Uh, hosted Citrix for remote access and uh, virtual environments. Any questions on that? Authorized supervisor to execute agreements for the nutrition program for the elderly for 2022. Any questions? Approve stop DWI agreement with Erie County. Any questions? Fitness in the park, we got back, YMCA. Any questions? And we have some hiring, uh, youth and rec hiring is the next one. And we have some appointments. Uh, Corey Roger is the, um, you just have to amend that appointment. I guess there's a different start date. Uh, 28 is appointment of a laborer in uh, facilities, Nicholas Worrell. 29 is appointment of a laborer in highway, Robert Spear. Any questions on those? And then we have a couple special events. Um, Western New York Perinatal Bereavement Network Fundraiser. And the Western New York Perinatal Bereavement Network Annual Walk to Remember. Traveler uh, authorizations, two of them for the police department. These are, and then we have our waiver items. Uh, you have a purchase of one new and unused uh, 537 single axle dump truck for the sewer department. We had discussed this before regarding the use of the American Rescue Funds. And number two is the award of bid for the backup generator at the town record center. Next waiver item is the award of bid for the backup generators at various pump stations. Next resolution is authorized supervisor to submit a letter of support for the raise grant application sought to be submitted by Niagara Frontier Transportation Authority. Any questions? Five is the HVAC assessment at Town Hall. God knows we need that taken care of, right? And six is the generator assessment at Town Hall. And seven is support of the Donor Conceived Person Protection Act. It's New York State Senate Bill S7602. And I was able to find out a little more information about exactly um, why this is uh, being presented to us. It, in, in May of 2020, Stephen Gunner of East Aurora he had died of an accidental opioid overdose. He was 27. He suffered from mental illness, particularly schizophrenia. Stephen, though, was conceived with donated sperm from Fairfax Cryroll Banks. He was don his uh, donor was number 1558. Each donor is asked to fill out questionnaires. Answers about health history are supplied by the donors. On the honor system, and are accepted at face value without verification. So when donor 1558 answered no to the question, have you ever had psychiatric care, 
there was no attempt to verify his answer. They went on, just on his word, and in this instance, his no answer turned out to be false. There are strong similarities between Stephen and donor 1558. His, like Stephen, 1558 also died of an opioid overdose. Like Stephen, 1558 joined strange cult-like worship groups, often centered around psychedelics. Both of them had impulsively traveled to California and both of them became homeless. One can't help but wonder what if 1558's profile had included the information about the hospitalization for schizophrenia. Worst of all, Fairfax broke no laws since so much of the fertility industry is self-regulated. State Senator Pat Gallivan sponsored the Senate bill S-7602, the Donor Conceived Person Protection Act, which is now in the Health Committee in Albany. The bill would protect recipients by requiring verification of a donor's medical history, along with information about the donor's educational background and criminal record. Currently, this information is self-reported by the donor and is never confirmed. Senator Galifan has uh, received support so far from Erie County Executive Mark Polencars, uh, Representative Chris Jacobs, and several colleagues in the legislature and several other towns, including Amherst, Evans, and Lancaster. And I hope this town board will pass this resolution tonight. Um, any other questions? And thank you, Councilmember Millick, for sponsoring it with me. Eight is uh, to support Assemblymember Monica Wallace's request of the New York State Assembly to create a grant to retrieve public lands impacted by invasive species. Any questions on that? It's a good thing we need the trees. So. I just also want to uh, mention, um, I see all the TCA board members here, or yes, all the TCA employees here tonight. Um, thank you for coming and filling our room. It's very, not very often we see everybody and appreciate you being here tonight. Just really quick to clear the record, earlier in our discussion, it was, I think it was Councilman Jaczynski said I was on the budget committee. I'm not on the budget committee. I was last year. This year's budget committee members are Councilman Jaczynski and Supervisor Benchkowski, just so we're all aware of that. I'm not on the budget committee. This Since time. we're clarifying things, Brian, taxes do include your garbage. So what that encompasses the word taxes too, just to clarify the record too. Okay, so um, we have a, a couple minutes. Do you want to take a break or we have an executive session you want to do after the meeting? What do you want to do? You want to take a break or it's already? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's uh, uh, go into executive session uh, to discuss the employment history of particular persons. I need a second. Council Member Kamensky, all in favor? Opposed? 